Okay. It's boys and girls, as the mic is cutting out as we start, what is going on here on this Monday, September the 12th, 2022. Appreciate you all tuning in. What's going on? Make sure we're good. Mic is good. Camera is good. Y'all let me know if we're having any technical issues. It is Georgia week. It is fire. We have got the shirt on, of course. I'm going to go ahead and try to get out ahead of this and fix the microphone here. Hopefully the must champ hackers leave us alone and we don't have too many issues. Either way though, appreciate you all tuning in. We are here live taking your questions, comments, calls 843-790-3377. That is 843-790-3377. And there goes the mic again. DC Corey Bridges, Ken. And I wonder, is this the Corey Bridges that played for South Carolina football or is this a guy just named Corey Bridges? Corey, let me know if that's you. Uh, Ken's, Travi, Justin Bryant, C. Young, Bloodletter, Matthews, Josh Reichley, uh, Todd Smith, Stephanie Lee, Connor Lee, Chase. What's going on? Appreciate you all tuning in. Also, guys, in the Big Cock Club Discord, head over to the TDC Questions channel, the TDC Questions channel, to be sure that your questions are answered there. Again, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Okay, Corey, thank you for confirming that. I, I was honestly just curious because Corey does – uh, he is friends with us on Facebook. He does follow along there. He'll comment from time to time. So I was like, I wonder if Corey, I wonder if Corey is logged in on uh, YouTube and is commenting. Uh, guys, before we really get going, of course, the Daily Crow is always brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks. Go download the Price Picks app. Or go to PricePicks.com. Use that promo code TSUS to receive a 100% deposit match up to $100, right? You're gambling this football season. We've all got our pools and our fantasy football and our spreads and our over-unders and all that good stuff. Add price picks to your rotation. Add price picks to your rotation. Um, guys, it's a big chance to win money. You can do the prop plays on college, NFL, MLB, NBA, all that good stuff. Uh, tons of money to be won. A ton of our listeners and ton of our fans of TSUS are winning money with our friends at Price Picks. So again, that's PricePicks.com and/or go download the Price Picks app. And when you do, use that promo code TSUS at sign up to receive a 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Of course, here we're here on this Monday, uh, talking Gamecocks 44 to 30 loss to Arkansas. Garcia got Stephen Garcia upcoming here shortly. Let's go to the phone lines. Justin, what's going on, man? How are you? Not much. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. Appreciate you asking, man. What's up? Hey, Chris. Um, the offense did the best they could do, but, man, Chris, I, I, I think the offense needs a little work, too, and the defense needs work, too, because the one defense they could not stop the run. Yeah, I mean, listen, this this game on Saturday, it all comes down to not stopping the run. Uh, I know we can nitpick the offense, and I'm certainly not saying don't be critical of guys like Satterfield and, and, and Spencer Rattler has got to play better, but – you know, unfortunately, in a game like that, when, when your defense does such a poor job of stopping the run and, and getting stops in general, your offense has to play a nearly flawless game. And so that's why that is that is uh, highlighted the way it is. So, you know, that game comes back to run defense. You give up 295 yards on the ground, five yards per carry. If you'd have told me that in pregame, I would have told you you had absolutely no shot to win the football game. So... Um, the game, you know, I, I'll be honest, and I said this on the podcast this morning, the game went about exactly as I expected. Um, the How high scoring it was is what was surprising. Um, how high scoring it was is what was surprising. But, uh, you know, the game went as I expected. You know, I, I thought Arkansas had the advantage up front. We talked about that all summer that they did, and certainly that showed itself. Um, that showed itself on Saturday. So, it, it's – you know, I, again, I, I think there's a reason you're seeing them recruit in the trenches the way they are. There's a reason they're recruiting these big physical offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and um, they're doing the best they can what they got right now. But, uh, you know, you just don't have – you know, it just wasn't a good matchup. It's not, it's not to say you don't have the, the big uglies to compete against some of the others in your schedule, but a team like Arkansas, man, the matchup was just – it was never good. It was never good, and uh, that was the result you saw on Saturday. Oh, yeah. And Chris, and stand by, listen, I was concerned about Arkansas last Saturday, Chris, because I have been saying this was not going to be a good basketball. So I call you know that because, look, we know Arkansas is physical, you know, because they've been physical since that people have landed, you know. Hmm. 
No, yeah, for sure. I mean, again, they're a really physical football team, and Arkansas is really good. I mean, they're probably a nine or ten win football team this year. I mean, there, there's a lot of folks that are high on Arkansas uh, for a damn good reason. They're a good football team. We, it's not like we lost to a bad team. Um, it's not like we lost to a bad team. So, um, you know, offensively, I'll tell you this, no moral victories, by the way. No moral victories at all, but I, I saw some encouraging things on Saturday from the offensive side. I mean, it was just good to see us have some offensive success. Um you know, I, I tell you this, and, and some folks may not like this take, and we'll talk about this take a lot this week, and we can debate this. What I saw on Saturday, and I don't even mean this as a slight, I feel like this is kind of obvious. This is the same football team as last year, just with a better quarterback. That, that, that's really what this team is. Um, and you look across the board, man, a lot of it is the same players. So, again, it's not, it's, it's not even really meant as a slight or an insult. It's just for the majority, the core – this team is who it is. It's the same team as last year with a different quarterback. That's not to say, again, you can't go win seven or eight games, but a lot of the deficiencies that haunted us last year are following us into this season. You know, can't run the football, can't stop the run. Two things we also couldn't do last year. The stats show it. You know, at some point you are what the numbers say you are, right? And this isn't a two-game sample size in this season. It's a sample size going all the way back to last season because, again, it's a lot of the same players. So, and it's fine. We can still have a successful season with, with, with that being true. But what I saw on Saturday, it, it felt like the same group. I mean, a little bit better. Don't get me wrong. But pretty much the same group as last year, just again, with improved quarterback play. So, uh, but again, Arkansas, Arkansas was not a great matchup for us. And we will have much better matchups as the season progresses. But, uh, you know, is what it is. All right, Justin, appreciate the call. We're going to jump to another call here. Call from? Will from Darty Marlowe. Hey. Will, what's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Appreciate you asking. What's up? All right. So, uh, <clears throat> what I saw was, uh, first off, kudos to the offensive line. They pass blocked way better than they did the week before. Um, still didn't seem like it was great run blocking, but, I mean, we really didn't even try to run the ball, so who knows. Um, secondly, I hate that Strom went out because Strom looked like he was really coming. He almost had two sacks in a row there. Yeah. Well, are you um, talking about Strom? Uh, talking about Strom? Yeah, Strom. Yeah, they, yeah. they just announced, yeah. by the way, USC just announced he and Mo Kaba will miss this season with ACL injuries. So, they will God, be out for the man. rest of the year. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. He looked like he was coming off the corner super strong. And also, Burks looked really good. I think we got to give Burks a little bit of props. Just in that yeah, game. he played well. Double-digit Pass tackles. Like Double-digit tackles. a lot well. Yeah, to, uh, a yeah, sack and, and two tackles Pickens for loss. Too. Yeah. 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 Pickens um, with but, 12 tackles. It, it all it all equated to 295 yeah. yards rushing for Arkansas. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, yeah. right. Fantastic. Well, day. I mean, we, we – <laughs> I just want to give some individual, like – Right. No, I, I, yeah, no, I, I hear you. I did that on the podcast, too, man. Listen, after I talked about Burks, hey, he, he, you know, the numbers at least say he had a uh, – he had a good game yeah. and picking too. He looked so, more no, I, impactful. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little, I'm just giving you some grief. Right, right, right. Um, also, uh, offensively, I thought Rattler did pretty good. Um, he made some mistakes, but I mean, that was probably the most passing yards we've had in the game since I'd say probably Clemson with Bentley. Am yeah, I no, wrong? It, it was, I it, it was. You're correct. It, you're correct. You're okay. correct. It was, yeah. So, so not that that's anything to hang your hat on, but it was, and also. Juice Wells introduced himself as he is that guy. Yeah. I think we can – you know what I mean? He is that guy. And I hate that Van's not getting as much love. I'm sure he will eventually. But he's the guy we thought he was. You know what I mean? Like, Wells is a dude. Yeah. No, and, Juice looked great. Man, I Juice like looked great. Um, but uh, it, there were some things to build off of. I mean, I think we, we made a lot of friggin' mistakes, man, and we were right there in it. In the fourth quarter. I mean, there was – we had a chance to make it a game. You know what I mean? Like, so, that that in itself, we just got to start quicker. I don't know what it is under Beamer, but it just seems like we start slow a lot. Even in the games we end up winning sometimes, we start slow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I no, just, dude, I, I mean, on the road I specifically. On the I'm on, on the road yeah. specifically, my, my good buddy, uh, if I can find the tweet here while you're on the phone, but I, I thought about this on the podcast. Uh, Brad Crawford pointed it out Saturday afternoon. 
Um, let's see, Brad, I want to find this. I'm about to, let's see, let's see. Yeah, Gamecocks have been outscored. So in their last five SEC road games, all losses. So basically Shane Beamer's first five SEC road games of his tenure. Gamecocks have been outscored 131 to 36 in the first half of those games. Wow. So you talk wow. about starting slow. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the evidence is there, my friend. I, I And I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. I don't know if it's a mentality. I mean, listen, we've played some good football teams. Um, you know, we, we've played some really yeah. good football teams. But, man, it's just we, we've got to find a way somehow to get off to better starts on the road. I mean, it's just – and obviously we all know the next big road game or the next road game in general, Kentucky, right? you got to get off right. to a better start. Yeah. And – uh yeah, I mean, and I feel like we seem to always win the third quarter. You know, like third, fourth quarter, it seems like we always do really well in that quarter, which is encouraging. But it's like, man, if we could just start out a little quicker, you know, we'd really be in good shape. But, uh, I mean, there's no there's no more victories than a loss, but it definitely there were some things to be happy about. All offense looked good in the passing game. It's just a rush. Like, we can't run for 50 yards a game. We're, that's not going to work. You know, like we got to do better than that. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just all, listen. It's it's you you can have a six or seven win season just just living and dying by the pass. And but you know, it's just tough. Yeah. It's it's just tough when you play good football teams. And you know, listen, Georgia is just more of what Arkansas was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's all they are. Just yeah. more of what Arkansas, a better version of what Arkansas was. Um, you know, Kentucky when you go play them, and you know, I, I they they didn't look great or anything against Florida, but. uh they're known as a line of scrimmage football team. And also somebody just commented, Kentucky just announced they're going to get Chris Rodriguez back October the 1st, so the week before we play them. So they're going to be physical. And, you know, I mean, it just – physicality yeah. wins. And, and so at some point, man, you're going to have to – I don't know. I don't know. you, you got to combat it somehow. Uh, again, we're not going to continue to and give credit to the offensive line, pass blocking much better. But we're not going to continue to, to, to you know, beat it up, I guess, that we can't run the ball and we can't really stop the run. It is what it is. We found a way mm -hmm. to win seven last year doing it. And – you know, you just hope that we can navigate yeah. and find a way to win seven again. So. I just I, – I hope that just somehow we could find a way to kind of plug that hole a little bit because I thought – I was pretty confident from what Beamer was saying that we were going to have a more strong inside and in the defensive line. You know, you know Shane Beamer did preach all summer that the defensive tackles were the, uh, the strongest position group on the football team and – you know, again, listen, I think a lot of it goes back to linebacker. I mean, I listen, I I, I saw the back of Debo Williams' jersey a lot on Saturday. I, I did. Um, and, and so, you know what, I, I, I know there's just, and we've seen it today, just pure example of the sensitive fans. And, hey, man, listen, I'm just a reflection of what the stats are telling you, and the stats tell you we gave up damn near 300 yards rushing. I mean, I, whoever you want to blame or you want to say we just – had a bad day. Well, I mean, we've had two bad weeks now against the run. And what do you think Georgia's going to do? So, I mean, I mean, the over-under for Georgia team rushing has got to be at like 220, right? It has to be. 240, something like that. Because yeah. State, Georgia State, not Georgia, Georgia State ran for 200. So, <laughs> you can, can, can you uh, – I mean, think about it, my guy. I, I know who you're playing. I understand the schedule. But can you imagine through the first three weeks, your first three opponents ran, run for 200 or more yards against you? I mean, that's yeah, that's tough. tough to live with. It's tough to live with. So, yeah. Uh, also, any news on? So, is Cam going to be back for next week, or is that not? Uh, Beamer hasn't confirmed anything. Uh, I mean, they made it sound like it wasn't that big of a deal in regards to his injury. So, um, gotcha. Yeah. So. Okay. But it, it sounds All like right, it shouldn't yeah, be that big of a deal. So, yeah. But my guy, Will, we got yeah, a we I got mean, we got Garcia jumping in here, my guy. I don't mean to I don't mean to kick yeah, you off, but you. yeah, Later, we got brother. Garcia diving in. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk soon, my guy. We'll talk soon. All right, cool. Um, let's see. All right, we got the Roach King in waiting. Let's go ahead and get him in here. Roach King, what's up, man? How are you? Yo, good, man. How you doing, dude? I love the polo, man. First things first. Shout out to the folks at Rebel Rabbit. Uh, I'm doing well, man. Just getting it going here on this Monday. How was your weekend, my friend? Uh, good. Other than, uh, all my bets lost literally every single, oh, not, tough, a, not, not a good weekend. So, so did you have a, a good first weekend and a right, where are you at in regards to the books? Where are you at overall? Um, I think I'm still up like 270. Okay. But okay. yeah, this, this is a rough, uh, this is a rough weekend for me. College and NFL or just college? Yeah. Yeah. Both. Yeah. 
Ugly. Did, did, ugly. Bucks, did the Bucks cover or no? I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't they, know. Won. I, they won. They won. So. Put them in. They, uh, I do teasers and uh, big parlays. And once they, once one of them lost, I said, the hell with it. I'm not watching the rest of it. <laughs> it sucks, I, man. It sucks. I, I, I hear you. I hear you for sure. Um, well, anyways, man, anyways, man, I appreciate you taking the time. <clears throat> Always a pleasure to have you in on these Mondays. And, of course, we've got a ton to talk about. Uh, what happened over the weekend? Hard fought, tough game. Uh, Gamecocks lose a 44 to 30 to Arkansas. Not a game that I, I don't know that the final result when you look at, you know, spreads, predictions, whatever, preseason predictions wasn't necessarily surprising. But of course, the way it happened uh, always leaves us with something to discuss. Let's first, of course, start your specialty offensively. Gamecocks score 30 points. Uh, Spencer Rattler racks up 376 yards passing, but of course, in a losing effort. I first want to start with this because. You know, we spent all week, you know, just talking about the offensive line, and we were very critical of the offensive line. Thought they played better in regards to pass blocking. I, I really thought the pass blocking was much better, and I'm sure, again, you can give better insight. Um, what I did notice and I thought about you, Stephen, was that the announcers even made the point on the interception that Spencer Rattler had that he saw pressure, didn't trust the protection, you know, moved around in the pocket, delivered the ball late, and, of course, it was picked off. But all in all, though, you throw for 376 yards – it's hard for me to come, you know, I've seen some people coming down on Spencer Rattler and it's just like, I mean, I think he had a decent day. I mean, just talk about what you saw from Rattler. Again, the offensive line, again, I thought pass pro was much better overall from the passing game than Spencer Rattler himself. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought he played well. Um, I was glad to see that he took a couple deep shots, um, you know, kind of overthrew Amari and who's, you know, he's actually from Tampa. I've thrown with him. I threw with him this past off season. He came down here and, I mean, the kid can fly, so for him to overthrow him was kind of a uh, kind of tough to to, to watch. But yeah. you know, I think a few of those a few of those would have hit. It changed the uh, the you know the outcome of that game. Um, between that, we just can't stop the damn run. That was that was tough, man. I remember seeing number five running wild like that. Uh, you know, twelve years ago. So yeah, that, actually, that brought that brought back some tough memories watching yeah, him run. I'm not gonna lie. I think it was longer than twelve years ago. Obviously, I think it was like. 14 years but yeah man it was it was tough to watch that but um but yeah I think the offensive line definitely played better um I thought Spencer played played well but yeah like you mentioned I mean he's still he's still kind of seeing the rush a little too much for for my liking but I think he's gonna get better with time yeah uh, you, you mentioned those deep balls man like you said it, it, it was so close a couple of those were like fingertips like just off and I guess that be that would just be something that just comes with more reps and getting more comfortable and getting more chemistry with your guys or I mean again it's it's hard to you're really nitpicking being like but you do got to hit those I mean yeah. SEC ball you only get a couple chances per game and it's like you said it's the difference between winning and losing hitting those hitting those deep shots oh I mean it, it changed it changes the whole uh, momentum of the game you hit a couple of those deep balls I mean that's Anytime you have a big play like that, whether it be on offense or special teams or, you know, getting a pick, I mean, it changed the whole momentum of the game. And, you know, I think if we were to, if we were fortunate enough to hit one of those or two of those, I think that would have changed the uh, the momentum a lot. Yeah. Now, now, who appeared or who was, I guess, Spencer Rattler's favorite target on Saturday, Antoine Wells. Just talk about what you saw from his game. Uh, what, eight catches, 189 yards, I think, a touchdown. He looked to be as good as advertised on Saturday. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. He's a, uh, He's a big target, man. I mean, the guy can get open. He creates that separation. Um, he's got. Oh, did we lose Steven there for a second? That's what happened. Uh, Steven, I want to ask you this, too, because a lot of fans felt like we maybe abandoned the run a little bit too early. And I, I thought the game plan you obviously saw, they lost Catalan Slusher going in the game. Uh, you know, Shane Beamer confirmed it post game. The, the, the plan was to attack the secondary go down the field, stretch the field. Did you feel like that? Maybe they abandoned the run game a little bit early. Your just overall thoughts on the scheme and, and their game plan to attack. No, I, I think you're hundred percent right. Uh, you know, anytime that you're kind of playing catch up mode throughout the entire game, um, you know, and you're not running the ball as much as you want to originally, I think, uh, I think that definitely changes your whole outcome. But yeah, I mean, as uh, Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a game plan until you get punched in the face. So um, unfortunately, Arkansas was just running down our freaking necks. So it was a, uh, it was tough to tough to watch, man. But you know that they're they're a good team. That's again, we're not playing some slap dick operation. I mean, Arkansas is a good damn team, and those are yeah. those are big, those are some big uh, guys back there in that backfield. Yeah, big physical football team. You look at KJ Jefferson. Obviously, he embodies that, right? Six four, two forty. He looked like Cam Newton Jr. to me. I mean, that's that's when I watched him. 
Uh, that's what it came off as. But, uh, I mean, again, like you mentioned, big physical in the line of scrimmage, and that's why we thought the matchup was going to be tough for South Carolina. And, again, you know, everybody wants to talk offense. It's so much fun to talk OC and quarterback play and the run game, whatever. And I totally understand. I, I still don't think the offense – played perfectly I mean I left this game no moral victories obviously but encouraged by the offensive performance but man when you give up 295 yards rushing on the ground I mean, it's just it's just hard to, you know what I mean it's just you know and you get right. the game to 24 to 16 right you get it 24 to 16 literally the next drive they bust off a 70 yard run I mean it's just yeah at some point you got to get a stop you got to get a stop yeah a hundred percent, a hundred percent. If you're able to run, run wild like they were, I mean, it's it's tough to tough to beat anybody when they when they can do that. So, yeah, they got they got to shore that up that uh, that defensive lineup. I mean, that's just that's bottom line. They just got to get that done. Yeah, and, and I mean, of course, it gets it gets no easier against the Georgia Bulldogs. I, I mean, I would ask you this, you know, from the defensive side, was there was there anything you saw Arkansas was doing, or is it just as simple as they're just really big and really physical, and they just it just felt like they were just pushing us around. I mean, to be totally yeah. honest with you. No, 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, they, they. I mean, like you said, they are big physical guys up there. And, uh, I mean, that's that's the Arkansas that I remember um, yeah. playing. Against. I mean, just a big-ass offensive line, big-ass defensive line, big linebackers. I mean, that's a, that's the old Arkansas. So, I think uh, Coach Pittman's got those guys kind of rolling right now. But, um, yeah, this, uh, this Georgia game is going to be tough. I'm actually – right before I jumped on here, I'm booking my flight. So, flying up there on Thursday. Um, hey! Gonna be at the game. I'm pumped. Here we go. Here we go. Stephen Garcia, the Roach King, in town. Yep. Breaking news. Invading Columbia. The Roach King is invading (laughs) Cola once again. Love to hear that. Um, Stephen, something I was definitely excited to ask you about, by the way, here on this Monday, because one thing I've seen since Saturday is identity, offensive identity, and like what is the DNA of the football team? And I understand fans' frustration, right? I understand it because I feel the same way, you know, ever since I feel like Steve Spurrier has left, we have struggled to kind of find our identity. You know, like you mentioned Arkansas, their DNA, big physical run the football, right? Yep. Kentucky has a DNA. Georgia has a DNA. Like when you play them, you know what you're going to get. Now that doesn't mean they don't make adjustments and adjust the game plan based on the opponent, but you sort of know what they're all about. Do you feel like Carolina's struggling to find its identity, to find its DNA? Like, do you have an opinion on what it should be? Because, like, again, that's, I think, a lot of what frustrates fans is we just don't have one. Like, like you don't yeah. know on a week-in, week-out basis. And I understand, you know, you're, you're, you got a lot of moving pieces. you got a new quarterback. you got a, you know, a, an offensive line you're trying to work with. you got new receivers. I, like, I get that, but – it, it, it's 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 hard for fans to live with like on a weekend week out basis i don't really know what we do well I, I know what we do poorly but i don't really know what we do well i don't even know what we want to do you know what i mean like yeah, how, no. how important do you think it is to find that identity it's like this is who we are yeah no i i, I i'm as lost as anybody else um you know i think maybe he's trying to get coach Beamer's trying to get like that lincoln riley and the oklahoma style type you know sling and shoot type deal I, again, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's it is kind of confusing as as a fan. Um, but shit, I don't I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on that. But I do know that Arkansas. I mean, Georgia. These Alabama. They have identities, as you're saying. We we got to figure out what the hell we want to do, and just stick to it and, and get it going. What what did you feel like you guys' identity was when you were at South Carolina? Did you feel like because I mean, Steve Spurrier's game obviously evolved from you know the fun and gun to. I mean, you guys were about run game, defense. Of course, you threw the football around, but, you know, it was a lot of run game and defense, I feel like, when you were there. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, that's, you know, that's what that's the kind of guys we recruited. That's the uh, kind of offensive scheme Coach Burr wanted to do and, you know, thought it would be successful. And obviously, you know, it was. Um, you know, maybe Coach Beamer, I mean, he's, it's, it's again, it's year two. So, I mean, he's got, got a little bit of time to kind of figure that out. But, you know, I think uh, the sooner the better. So, you know, we, we actually kind of move forward and, and figure out what the hell we're doing. Yeah, Stephen, again, no moral victories, but encouraging signs you saw from Saturday because what's so weird, of course, again, we we talked a week ago to the date, and (laughs) I guess it's just because of expectations and and feelings going into a game. Because, you know, I I went into Arkansas, you know, I picked this as a loss in the preseason, didn't love the matchup. And so the game sort of played out how I thought it would, just maybe a little bit higher scoring. It's weird. I, I feel... No moral victories, but I think I almost – I felt more encouraged leaving a 14-point loss against Arkansas than I did leaving 
a 21-point win against Georgia State just because of how it happened and seeing offensive success, I guess, like seeing Spencer Rattler have some success. So, again, no more victories. We're not throwing a freaking parade because you lost by two touchdowns on the road to Arkansas. But positives that you were able to take away from this football game moving forward and things you think this football team can build off of. I think the offense, as you mentioned, um, played a lot better, a hell of a lot better than uh, they did against, you know, Georgia State. Um, that being said, I mean, we can't – we you just can't allow guys to run wild like they did. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, I, I think it was encouraging for for Rattler to, to have some success, as you mentioned. Um, but, I mean, Cincinnati kind of threw the ball over Arkansas as well. On week one, so I mean, their secondary actually top tier. Um, but yeah, I think I think moving forward, I think he stayed in the pocket a little bit longer. I kept kept his eyes downfield a little bit longer than uh, maybe week one against Georgia State. So I don't know. I think that I, I hate giving moral victories because I don't believe in them. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that their uh, the offense played a lot better. Right. Yeah. So now you move forward to this game against Georgia, and, and I feel like G- Georgia is just more of what Arkansas was, right? And and I guess. You know, I won't even say there's mystery because they're the number one team in the country and they're defending national champions. They played Oregon, beat them 49 to three, dismantled them, uh, played Samford, beat them 33 to nothing. I'd also point out, by the way, to Gamecock fans, I don't know if you even knew this, Stephen. I had somebody tell me that Georgia played on a running clock in the fourth quarter. Kirby and the Samford head coach agreed going in the fourth quarter, hey, let's just keep a running clock. Running the, the fourth quarter was over in like 20 minutes, they said. It just running clock, just nonstop. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know you, I didn't know you could do that. I really didn't. I, um I thought- I thought it was Little League in high school. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Apparently, they played on a running clock. Kirby and the Sanford head coach are but I don't know. They're buddies. I, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't do that either. But no. uh, <clears throat> either way, we'll first start with this. Your experiences against the Georgia Bulldogs. Obviously, you beat these guys. You went into Athens. That 09 game was an incredible football game. Uh, 2010, obviously, the tough, what was it, 17-6, to six, I think, game. Of course, we all recall that was the the Marcus Lattimore for his – his coming out party, the, he broke 70,000 tackles in that football game. 2011, <laughs> you beat them on the road in Athens. Just talk about, again, your experiences playing, George. I mean, 2008, I think you might have came in that game. That was the uh, – and I love my guy, Mike Davis, the OG Mike Davis, but the, the fumble in the end zone, what did we lose, 13-7 to 7 or something like that? And just – they yeah, were the number one team in the country. They were actually number one at that time also. Uh, yeah. Matt Stafford, Noshawn, and all those guys. And, of course, you were – I don't know if you traveled, but you were on that team in 07 when we beat them in uh, – yeah in Sanford as well. But either way, again, bottom line, just talk about your experiences against Georgia. Obviously, South Carolina, Georgia means a lot. A lot of Georgia guys on the roster, and uh, it, it's always a big game for sure. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, Georgia, Georgia's they, uh, like, you know, they like to think of themselves as the bigger brother to, to us. So, um, you know, anytime you get a chance to play against them, and it's always a blast. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have a blast playing against them this year. Um, them, boys, them boys are freaking playing right now, and – what I what I hate more than anything is how much disrespect uh, Stetson Bennett gets. I mean, how how he's not in the list for a Heisman is beyond me. Um, but then you guys guys like Anthony Richardson and KJ Jefferson that are you know getting all this all this praise and stuff. It's like I, I just I don't get it. Um, but yeah, he's uh Georgia Georgia's got it. I mean, they're they're a hell of a team right now. It's I don't know what the spread's going to be this week, but uh, I I hope that we can uh, hope that we can show some damn pride at least on. I, I, my friend, I, I'm surprised you haven't seen. Georgia opened as a 26-point favorite. That number has dropped, but it's 24 and a half. So, uh, hammer Yikes. the cocks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I might have written all over it. I might have to tease that one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big spread for sure, but it is what it is. Like you mentioned, Georgia is just on another planet. Uh, sticking with your playing day, Stephen, favorite, favorite memories against Georgia, favorite game, and obviously, again, you beat them twice. Uh, 09 was a fun one. Anything that sticks out, though, just any fun stories? or Because, I mean, again, I, I know, like you mentioned, Coach Spurrier, the, the Florida week was when he'd get real amped. But, I mean, he obviously loved beating Georgia. Oh, he loved it. Loved it. Um, I mean, really, all the games were, were freaking awesome. Uh, the one that I did travel, uh, with the, my register year in 2007, uh, when we did beat Georgia, and Blake Mitchell threw the ball all over the freaking yard. Um, but, I mean, I remember seeing Stafford do a play action. And I, I want to say – ball like 75 or 80 yards in the air and just absolutely uncorked the ball um but i don't think there's anybody within like 15 yards so it doesn't matter but i mean that's that's like really like the only cool memory that i can like vividly see just like holy shit this guy can absolutely freaking throw the hell out of the ball yeah yeah he's got a rocket on his right (laughs) i i I thought you were going to mention i remember the play action they did where georgia you know they love to do that 
that play action, the running back, fake hand off the receiver, and he just kind of stands there for a second. Yep. And Eric Norwood just laid his ass out. Yeah. He just, yeah. just laid him out. So that's yep. Yeah, that, that was a fun night, man. Corey Boyd, Jasper Brinkley, that entire yep. crew. That was that was a fun one for sure. Um, again, you look at this game, and I, I don't know, Stephen, I, I'll be honest, I haven't, you know, I didn't watch a bunch of Georgia's first game, and obviously I didn't watch them play the mighty Sanford Bulldogs, but um, you know, they lost a lot defensively. So you know, again, I don't really know how good Oregon is, right? A lot of this game is like, how good is Oregon really? Bo Nix, their quarterback, you know, they go on the road. They got a lot of new pieces defensively. Granted, they reloaded with a bunch of five-star guys and guys, right. basically the next crop of draft picks. That's pretty much who they reloaded with. Um, if you're the Gamecocks, I, I mean, again, it's it's not an easy question to answer, but how would you attack Georgia offensively? Do you, do you think they should stick with the spread, trying to throw it all over the place? You've struggled to run the ball. Georgia's got an elite defensive front. I mean, you know, not, it, it's not an easy situation for, for Satterfield and that offensive staff this week. Yeah, no, I, I think you got to spread them out and just try to try to pitch and catch it all over the place. Because as you mentioned, like our, our run game, I don't it, it's kind of non-existent. Um, we're not really running the ball. I don't even we're not really even trying to run the ball right now either. Um, so I, I think I think we just got to stick with it and, and spread them out and just try to pitch and catch and try to keep the ball in our hands as long as freaking possible. Um, long sustained drives, keep their offense off the belt, off the, uh, off the field. And I mean, that's what you're going to have to do to beat this team. You can't turn the ball over. I mean, I remember watching that Oregon game and Bo Nix, you know, everybody's like, Oh, this is the standard Bo Nix, Bo Nix throwing picks. Um, <laughs> I think he's a pretty good player, but uh, yeah. Anytime you turn the ball and give them extra possessions. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough, uh, tough mountain to climb there. And then defensively, I, I want to start with the Stetson Bennett thing. Does it make you cringe when you hear people talk about quarterbacks as game managers? Like, when you hear that, what, what do you think? I think of Kerry Collins. You remember him from the uh, Giants? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I, I remember yeah. that was, like, the first person that I ever heard be called a game manager. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? Like, the guys in the NFL, he's, he's a game manager in the NFL. Like, what are you talking about? Um, when I think of that, I think of people like, you know, just kind of just hand the ball off, you know, comfortable with the ball. They're not slinging it around. They're just kind of very, you know, nickel and diamond it. And so Stetson Bennett is not a game manager. I mean, I saw him make some throws that are like, holy shit, that's a, that's a big time throw right there. Um, you know, some of the plays that he made against Oregon when he's scrambling and puts the ball in his left hand and resets quick and then throws it to, uh, throws to that guy wide ass open in the left side of the end zone. I mean, the guy's making plays. So I, I hate when people refer to him as a game manager. I, I think that term sucks anyway. Anybody ever refer to you as a game manager? Not not that I know of. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, I, I, I doubt it. I mean, I certainly wouldn't label you that. But I, 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 just, I was about to say, I, I, you play, uh, you know, kind of uh, tight like that. I kind of just let it go. Man. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a lot of ways to label your game. I don't think game manager fits yeah. very well. No. You know? You don't you don't practice and run drills like I think a game manager would if, if I had yeah. I think you and you and Greg McElroy probably have a different set of drills. Let's put it that way. Yeah. No, no offense to Greg, by the way. But, you know, he was referred For to sure. game manager, um, you know, pulling a massive upset like this. I, I don't recall, Stephen, if if uh, if you guys played many. Well, the spread was 26 or 27 or what have you. Um, not sure if y'all played many games like that. But when, when you look at a ball game like this, um, you know, keys to success, keys to victory, anything specifically you think would have to happen to pull off a, a major upset? I think we got to do kind of what we did to Georgia State, maybe get a uh, pump block for a touchdown or, you know, have a big special teams play. Um, we got to stop the run. If we don't stop the run, I don't think we stand any chance in hell anyway. Um, so we got to be able to stop the run. Uh, and I think we got to keep, you know, like I was saying, we got to keep the ball in our hands and keep our offense on the field, try to keep, try to limit their possession. Um, I think that's definitely going to be big. But I think I think to kind of pull off an upset like this, I think you're going to need a, a special teams turnover or you know maybe a pick six or you know something like that. Um, I mean that's that's just what it is. I remember when we beat Alabama and they were number one. I remember uh, we stopped them on a uh, fourth. Uh, they tried to run a fake punt or something or fake field goal, and we had stopping. I mean those are big plays. That's what you got to do to, to to upset these guys. Yeah, I was going to say this too, Stephen. That like you know the first couple of of years for Steve Spurrier, and and not trying to necessarily draw comparisons between Shane Beamer's first couple and Spurrier's first couple, but 
What I always noticed, what I felt like Spurrier and those guys did such a good job. And again, blowouts happen. I remember the first year, 05, we went to Auburn, lost like 48 to seven, had to call two timeouts to open the game. You're like, well, this is going to go downhill really quickly. The Antonio Hefner game. Um, but uh, <clears throat> you guys did a really good job, I feel like, or, or Coach Spurrier or whatever. In, in games, and again, I'm not sure the spreads were ever this crazy, but just of competing in every game. Like, it, it didn't feel like we were getting blown out a ton. Like, I know it happened. I mean, I remember specifically a couple times when we played, we played Tim Tebow. It did not go very well. Um, you know, what, what was the, you know, as a former player, when you came into a game and you know you were a huge underdog, obviously you try not to pay attention to, to like bet like you don't care about what a spread is but you know when you when you're a major dog and you're getting picked against and I, I would assume what the preparation doesn't change at all but like the mindset I guess is there more of a chip on your shoulder and I, I just say that because I feel like those teams you guys did a really good job of it, it just always felt like it was a competitive game there were not a lot of a lot of blowouts and I think that's the biggest difference between year two and year one of Beamer what what I most wanted to see was you know Losing to Georgia, no, nobody's going to 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 write you off because of that. But it's like, it's how it goes. Like, do you make it a fourth quarter game? Is it competitive? Is the game over at halftime? You know what I mean? Right. Like, like the, there's a difference in in fighting your tails off and, hey, Georgia just beat you and, you know, Georgia covering a 24-and-a-half point spread. I mean, was there right. anything specifically you point to that 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 you guys were able to do to, to, to be competitive against the elites at that time, if you will? I, I don't. I don't think we changed any of our outlook, or if we played with more of a chip on our shoulder. I, I don't. I don't feel like we did that as a team. I feel that we were a very confident team in in any year that I was there. Um, we always thought we were going to win. You know, we thought we were going to go undefeated. I mean, that's just we had that we had that kind of mentality that we're not going to lose any games. Or we're going to we're going to beat some teams' ass. Um, but I do remember getting our asses handed to us against uh, Tebow and and uh, the Gators. I think it was like fifty six to six. That's when uh, me and Smelly were going back and forth every single play. That was that was brutal, but um, you know it's actually funny. We we always were at least the quarterbacks were. We were always made aware of what the spread was because Coach Spurrier would tell us every single pregame meal. He's like, ah, shit, yeah, they got us, they got us favored by eleven and a half points, and we're like, Spurrier would tell y'all what the spread was. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why do you think he did that? I I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I remember there was there was a game. I think that we played. This was after I uh, got dismissed from the team, but it was, uh, I think, against Mississippi State. And I think we were favored or there was there was some sort of controversy to where I think Connor ran out and, like, took a uh, safety so that they covered the spread, like, at the last play of the game. And I remember talking to uh, my buddy Cliff, and he's like, yeah, I mean, everybody thinks that Coach Berger gambled on the game because, like, there's no reason he had to take that safety. So <laughs> Looking at the I was like, man, he did he did mention the spreads every single morning at pregame pregame meal. Hi, dude. Conspiracy theory. Spurrier was, <laughs> was out here gambling on the games. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I, I love that. That that is so funny because I, I would just think to myself, like, there's no way coaches or players are, are paying attention. So to think Steve Spurrier's like, yep, well, 15 point underdog today. What are yeah. we gonna do about it? <laughs> God. <laughs> Wild. At that point, I, I had no idea what the hell. I didn't even know. Like gambling was a thing. I mean, I honestly had, yeah. I, I guess my head was stuck in the sand, but, uh, but yeah, he told us that. And I was like, what the hell does that even mean? Yeah. You, you probably had the same meeting, though, right? With like the, you know, they, they tell you, like, all right, NCAA rules, you can't play fantasy sports, can't play. Fantasy oh, yeah. Football. I, I remember sitting in those and just like, all right, bro. What yeah. Now, um, now, yeah. now, some these guys are getting paid millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, now, now they're getting paid to be endorsed by FanDuel or, or whatever, DraftKings, whatever it is. Uh, Steven, always a pleasure. I'll ask you this before I get you out of here again. Just turn them on a, on a side note, college football note. I just got to ask your thoughts on the weekend that was in college football, man. What, what a week. How about the Sun Belt? Georgia Southern beats Nebraska. Marshall beats Notre Dame. Uh, what's the other one? Freaking uh, App State beats A&M? I mean, thoughts on the college football weekend. What a, what a weekend it was. Unbelievable. I actually, uh, so when I used to go up to uh, Greenville to uh, train quarterbacks and do the camps up there, um, I actually started working with uh, Chase Bryce. Um, so that, that was, that had to be eight, eight or 10 years ago. I mean, it was, it was a long time ago. Um, anyways, I kept in contact with him and I actually talked to him after the game and he said that flight home was uh, pretty fun. I would imagine so. <laughs> I would imagine so. What, I mean, it's in, incredible, dude. Insane. Yeah. Um, um, Wild. Steven, always a pleasure, my guy. Thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, like I said, hope hope for the best against uh, the dogs. And obviously, safe travels to you. It'll be great to have you in town. And obviously, I'll text you after this, and we'll link up and figure something yeah. out. But it's always a pleasure when – Yeah, man, let's –
Yeah, makes his presence. Let's figure out, a little, figure out that little tailgate plan that we were doing. That yeah, we were dude, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I'll text you after this, and we'll we'll, okay. we'll get it worked out and everything. But uh, Roach King, appreciate you, my man. It's yeah. always a pleasure. All right, boss. We'll see you. Yeah, man. See you, Roach King. Out. Thank you, Stephen Garcia. What a time. What a time. Uh, always a pleasure to chat with him, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I apologize for some of the technical difficulties we had. I, I again, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the Melon platform. I, I don't know what it is um you know i i don't know what it is i i really don't i don't know if it's the melon platform I, you know we also also had a call I, I forgot to turn off the phone lines if you were, so we're just starting it off hot we're starting it off hot um here on a here on a monday eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven that's eight four three seven nine zero three three seven seven guys we can talk Everything that happened over the weekend, Gamecocks falling 44 to 30. But, you know, if you listen to the podcast this morning, I highly suggest you do, episode 701. Um, you know, I, I, no moral victories. I, I did think there were positives to take away. I, I really did. Um, you know, when you look at the offensive side, I mean, it, it just all comes down to, again, you know, running the ball, stopping the run. And, and those, just like last year, will be our biggest deficiencies. And, I mean, that's just what's unfortunate, guys, is that there's still a chance to win seven, maybe even win eight. But these first three weeks were just not going to be kind. They just weren't going to be kind. Um, in regards to what your weaknesses are and trying to overcome them, they weren't going to be kind, right? So, um, you know, it just is what it is. And so I, I agree with Steven. Um, you know, I, I agree with Steven. You, you don't really have a chance Saturday unless you stop the run. But, again, we're, we're going to talk about that much more uh, we're taking your questions, your comments, your calls, more of that, guys. On the other side, we'll jump into a quick break. You're tuned in to the Daily Crow.
All right, guys, we're back. Taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-337. That's 843-790-337. I tell you, again, appreciate Stephen Garcia, by the way, taking the time to chat. Really, really good stuff with him each and every single week. Uh, looks like one of the, uh, yep, one of the offensive linemen for Arkansas got co-offensive lineman of the week. Just checking to see if any of our guys got anything. I do not think they did. Uh, really excited to chat after seeing this news with Anthony Treesh of Pro Football Focus on Wednesday. Um, let's see. And here's another, hey, here's another stat. Listen to this. Spencer Rattler has a combined 92 passes, thrown, sacks taken, and rushing attempts. Per Pro Football Focus College, South Carolina has only had a running back tight end pass block on 30 plays so far of those 92. Uh, our friend Connor O'Gara says, Rattler needs to progress, but he also needs more protection help or else more frustration awaits. So, there you go. But our friends over at Sports Talk also posted this statistic. And by the way, guys, the phone lines are back open if you guys do want to call in. 843-790-3377. You can also text that number as well. Our friends over at Sports Talk posted this. Listen to this. According to stats compiled by Pro Football Focus, in Saturday's loss at Arkansas, the Gamecocks missed 21 tackles, and the Razorbacks had 154 rushing yards after contact. So half of their rushing yards came after contact. After contact. I mean, that is... Wild. Anyways, guys, we'd love to hear from you all. Let's see. Let's get back to the chat and back to the questions. Austin Greer says Juju is so much better than Lloyd with the ball in his hand. I, I do think we need to get the ball to, to Juju McDowell more. Um, obviously, big fan of Juju. I, I thought Marshawn played well. I, I thought he did. Listen, he fumbled the football. You're trying to make a play. It happens. I... I I can live with that. I can live with that. I think Marshawn's a good player. Um, he looks healthy, which is so encouraging. But, you know, hard to have any success running the football when the offensive line can't get a push. I mean, that's just simply what it comes down to. So, continue to use him. Lloyd obviously needs to touch the football. They both do, though. They both do. But I, I do love seeing Juju, man. Again, he's just an instant offense guy. That's what it feels like. He's an instant offense guy. And uh, so, uh, hold on to here. Brian, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Appreciate you asking. What's up? Oh, not too much. I've been kind of dealing with some stuff in my life. So, you know, I've kind of been in and out. But uh, I just wanted to call in and talk to you about, you know, a point that we we kind of talked about in the preseason, you know, the fact that Josh Van wasn't getting any respect and Juice Wells was kind of getting everything. Man, how did that pan out? Yeah, I, I'm listen. I'm surprised. Where's he, where's he been? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I don't know. They they need to put Josh Van on a milk carton at this point because he he's missing. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Is play? he? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he did. Listen, he played Saturday because he had a couple of fair catches uh, in the punt game. But I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's dealing with with injuries or just not. Uh, and you know, here's the thing. Shane Beamer was asked about this, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to put words in Shane Beamer's mouth. Basically, he just said, "Listen, our guys go out and practice, and the best players will play." and and, uh, you know, Josh is working his tail off, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting the ball to the guys that deserve it, and the best players will play. So, I mean, again, I am paraphrasing. I would highly suggest you go back and listen to what he had to say. But, you know, Josh Van's there, just not getting the football. I, I, I don't know. He's just not getting the football. So, That's just wild to me. I'm not going to say that, you know, what we're doing isn't working as far as the pass game is concerned, but uh, it's just highly surprising that you can't find some way to get him worked in there. Yeah. He's just too good of an athlete to – you know, fairly fair catch the ball. You know, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Amari and Brown got a lot of targets. I mean, listen, Jaheim Bell didn't have a catch. I mean, where's he at? You know, four carries for five yards and no catches. I mean, I, I you know, I, I want to give credit to the fact that defenses are doing everything in their power, right? They know those are our guys. They're, they're doing everything in their power to take it away. But Jaheim Bell going through a game with zero catches, that's mm, – I don't know, man. That's that's kind of tough to uh, – a little tough to stomach, you know what I mean? So, 
well, to that point, you know, if teams are doing the research on our team and try to figure out, you know, who our number one guy is, you know, I think everybody kind of hyped up Juice Wells in the offseason. They ain't even doing too well as a job stopping him. So, yeah, I mean, I mean – He's just playing his ass off. That's, it's been incredible to watch him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, uh, again, with Josh Mann. And I, I, we knew Antoine Wells was a guy with a ton of hype and, you know, thought he'd have a good season. <clears throat> a record setter from James Madison, but I, I, I just, you know, Brian, I, I don't have an answer for you, man, of why Josh Van isn't, uh, you know, why he isn't producing more. I mean, I, I, I feel like as the season progresses, you know, he will – I mean, you notice the first two weeks, right? Week one, week one, it was Jalen Brooks. Week two, it was Anthony yeah, Wells. It, would, it wouldn't shock me if it was somebody else. You know, maybe, maybe this is a thing where it's sort of just a rotating, you know, a, a, a rotating every week, a different guy – uh, you know, a different guy has a big game. And, you know, I think I think it'll be safe to say that if Antoine Wells has a big game against Georgia, then it'll be established, hey, he's the number one guy, no question. But, um, you know, who, who's going to be that consistent option? We got options, just who's the consistent option? That's that's the question. Yeah, he seems like a consistent option to me. I mean, he had a pretty good week, week one, too. You know, he wasn't top of the yeah. top of the tab board. But I think he had like four, four catches or something. Yeah, that's, that's respectable. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he'll definitely be that guy. Yeah, and I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Like I said, I kind of been off the grid here and there. So, I didn't know what the hell happened to Josh. No, yeah, I mean, I, you incredible. know, as far as I know, I think he's healthy. I, I don't think he'd be out there fielding punts if he wasn't. So, I, I just think it's simply through the first two weeks, you know, Rattler is uh, doing all he can in the passing game, and, and Van's just not one of the guys he's going to. I, you know, I don't know whether he's not getting open or the game plan is to go to somebody else. I don't know what it is. But uh, I, I would expect at some point Van is going to – uh, to have a ball game, what he's got one catch in two weeks. I mean, that, that's insane. I mean, that's yeah. just crazy. So, well, I'm not even sure if he got targeted on Saturday. I mean, I just... If he did, I don't recall it. <laughs> I just say that if he did, I don't right. recall it. Right on. Well, I just wanted to touch base with you. I'll talk to you next time, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, Brian. Thanks so much for the call. But... Yep. Great stuff. 843 That is 843 Seven. Let's see. Getting into your questions here. Getting into your questions. Satterfield play calling is horrendous, is what Carolina Titan says. I'm not saying it's great. I, I'm not. But, guys, again, uh, the issue is that you gave up 295 yards on the ground. That's the issue. Um, I mean, it is. You know what I mean? It is. It is. Um, that should be the storyline. <laughs> that should be the storyline. And, uh, like I said, I apologize for the – I think it's the Mellon. I'm going to have to hit up Mellon, the Mellon platform for the, the in and out. Um, Austin Greer, I told you all Van was going to be wide receiver three and gave me hell. Austin, hey, listen, you called it. You called it, I guess, right now at least. Uh, right now at least, Josh Van has been just MIA, which, again, has been shocking to me. I mean, if, if, if Antoine Wells took the wide receiver one job, that wasn't going to totally shock me. But the fact that Josh Van just, you know, has not been – just has not been heard from. Uh, that surprising to say the least. Here we go. We go. Jesse, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, Chris? Thanks for taking call, man. Yeah, for sure. What's up? Um, man, I was just I think kind of mixed emotions from Saturday. I think offense made some strides. Um defense <laughs> looked awful. I think everybody realized that. <laughs> Missed tackles, looked right. like we got pushed around a little bit. Um but I was just curious, I've been the last few last week or two, um, curious of your thoughts and I'll hop off after I get off just to listen but yeah it seems like some guys aren't jailing um completely it just seems a little off this year I don't know why um Josh Van, Jaheen, Juju they all it just seems like some guys are off and I know like new guys come in and take mm -hmm. some time but um that's just something I've kind of noticed and I was curious to get your thoughts on it just seems like something's a little off this year with the guys just right. curious thanks for the call man yeah no I appreciate you calling in my friend great stuff and a great question and you know, I, I think it comes back. It's just a bunch of new offensive pieces that are trying to gel. I mean, that, that is a real thing that uh, it can take some time. And, you know, to be fair, to be fair, um, you know, friend of the show, Mike Yuva, you know, Gamecock Central, he actually in his prediction said that. He, he said that he thought it would take time to gel. And there's been many others out there who have said the same thing. So, you know, anytime you've got so many new pieces, you know, th this is a – it was a veteran group, the offensive line veteran, but – you know, brand new wide receiver, brand new quarterback, new running backs. You got new pieces, new tight end, new pieces everywhere. Um, you know, it, it, taking time to gel. I mean, that's a real thing, the chemistry, if you will. So, um, I, I guess that's what I would point to. 
Um, is that an excuse? You know, is it just an excuse we pull out a footballism, if you will? Maybe so, but I, but I think you have to give credit to uh, you have to give credit to that. Let's jump to the phone lines here. Actually, that was a spam call. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Travis Ford, Coach Ford, what's up? We have fewer rushing yards as a team in two combined games, and Arkansas's running back game on Saturday. Coach Ford, I'm I'm very well aware of that, my friend. I'm very well aware. And Coach Ford, I, I, so I would ask you moving forward, what do you do? What do you do? I, I, do? Do you just completely ditch the run game? Do you try to keep running in spite of the fact? Like on Saturday against Georgia, I mean, I guess you have to try, but but do you really keep trying to run even though you know you can't run the football? So what do you do? I, I mean, I, I think what Steven said is very accurate. I, I think you continue to you continue to spread it out, um, go downfield. That, you, you're just – you're not – let me – you know, this game against Georgia, you could, you said the same – we said the same about Arkansas. You're not going to win this game in the trenches. You, you're, you're not. You're not going to win this game in the trenches. Let's go to – Exactly, Hall of Famer. To accept, press the – Robbie, what's up, man? How are you? What's up, man? Just hanging out, man. What's going Aside on? Aside from the game, did you have a good weekend? I did. I did. We had a uh, had a fun event Saturday, downtown Greenville, by the way. Shout out those folks in downtown Greenville. Had a really, really good time. Um, and then outside of that, man, just just watch ball and, you know, and, enjoyed the weekend with some friends. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot it of fun, man, for sure. It was Saturday, such a steady week. Yeah, it was. How, how, was uh, how was your weekend? Well... Aside, well, aside from the Gamecocks losing, my Steelers are 1-0, so I'm happy about that. Mm-hmm. And that game was an absolute doozy, by the way, okay? Went to overtime, and we kicked a field goal to win it. It was insane. I, I got to be but, honest um, with you. I did, uh, I did not watch a minute of NFL football yesterday. Not a single minute. Didn't even cut on the TV, believe it or not. So, but I'm glad your Steelers won. Yeah. But uh, anywho, I agree with the other callers, right? There, ha- that was, there have there was some very positive strides against Arkansas, and I said this last week, and I've said this for the last several weeks also. I feel like once we get it clicking, okay on both sides of the – in all three phases of, of the game, okay, we are going to give teams fit, and I'm being serious, because Juice Wells had one heck of a game Saturday, okay? Mm-hmm. And aside from those two, those two passes <clears throat> that Rattler threw that should have been – that honestly should have been caught, I feel like those would have been touchdowns. So, yes, the game, honestly, could have wound up being a lot closer than the scoreboard showed. At the beginning of the game, at least. Yeah, I mean, I think missing those deep shots early really changed the game. Um, you know, it's – you knew you were going to have to play a really, really high-quality game to beat Arkansas. I mean, there's a reason they were the favorite. It was a mismatch. So if you were going to beat them – you were going to have, you know, you, you can't, you can't miss those deep shots. You know what I mean? You just, you got to hit them. You got to capitalize. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's. Uh, and if this week was any proof, okay. Like you said, before going to break and when we went like we said with Garcia, Georgia Southern won App State, went into Kyle Field and beat A&M. Notre Dame got beat. I mean, it's just a proven fact of with this past weekend. If you don't, if you don't, play your a game on in all three phases you will lose to your opponent no matter who it is right okay now are we going to probably most likely and definitely need a miracle out of our behinds in order for us to beat georgia yeah, probably, okay? But one thing that I noticed while playing Arkansas Saturday, 
there was time, those times that he threw the ball deep, okay, I feel like he was trying to make too much happen at one time, okay, and in one of those plays, he had a check down from what I saw that was wide open, okay, and he didn't throw the check down. Yeah, I mean, listen, to, to you know, it, it's – Rattler had to be damn near perfect to give us a chance on Saturday. He, he, he did because of the defensive struggles. Right. Um, you know, right. you, got, you got to take what's there. It's just – it's 376 of the year. It's it's hard for me to really come down on Spencer in any way. It's 295 on the ground for Arkansas. Uh, I'm not coming down, and I'm just saying that there were times that he should have just taken the check down, man, and got what we could what got what we could have gotten which would have kept the drive going. Right. Instead of being in third and tens and third and twelves and third and thirteens and stuff like that, you know? Yes, you want to try to hit the big plays, but I, I look at it this way. You get enough small plays going, <clears throat> like you get five, four yards a pop, you do that enough, eventually those safeties and corners are going to come up mm. And that's whenever you go for the juggler. Mm. You do that, and, and and obviously if you do it too much, they'll catch on. So you got to, like, mix it up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, and those yeah. other safeties and <clears throat> corners stay back, don't even come up here. Mm. Stay about 15 yards, 15 yards back and don't even sniff the line of scrimmage. And this past weekend, just a side note here, uh, the James F. Burns Rebels head mm. coach, Coach Shaw, Reggie Shaw, who goes to my brother's church in Spartanburg, he got his 100th win this past weekend. So congrats to him. And all the positive stuff that happened, right? We got to build on that, and and no no pun intended, but turn this week's game into a daggum dog fight. And like I've said, if we if we somehow muck it up and make Georgia play our style of football. We could pull off the miracle. When will you have a score prediction, Robbie? Uh, you uh, what's today? Today's Monday. I'll give it to you by Thursday or Wednesday. I need some time to think on this because this is a big one. I'll give it to you by Wednesday or Thursday. Deal. That sounds good to me. Hey, whenever you like. Whatever but, uh, you like. But yeah, I just feel, I just feel, uh, and also, obviously, we're gonna need some. We're gonna, we're gonna have our, against Georgia. We're gonna have to steal some possession, right? Because that is one major key in beating a team that most people don't give you a flying chance in Hades to win. Okay, mm. but if you if you do if you steal a couple of possessions on the positive side of the fifty. Okay, and you capitalize off of it, that can swing some major momentum to 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 our to our side and get that crowd just going absolutely bonkers, okay. All right. From the time that ball is kicked Saturday afternoon, Prove to Georgia they are going to be in a daggum twelve uh, uh, a twelve round fight for four quarters. It's going to feel like a twelve round fight in that four quarter game. That's what we got. That's what we got to do. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I posted the clip back from July this morning, Robbie, and 
you know, it, fo- folks can get, you know, all upset and irritated with this all they want because, you know, some are like, well, you never know, we could win. But most likely we're not going to win. Uh, you're, you're a 24 and a half point yeah, underdog for a reason. Yeah, most likely we're not going to, but I'm but, just saying. <clears throat> Robbie, I, a lot yeah. is going to have to happen. Right, right. I, I, yeah, a miracle. A miracle is going to have to happen. Um, but, but again, the, yeah. the way I'm judging this exactly. season, and most of us are judging this season, you know, I, I mean, listen, it, it, it's one thing to lose. That's fine. I, I'm no, Nobody's going to call for Shane Beamer's job or go crazy or, you know, go, go to social media and act a fool if we right. lose to Georgia. But it's just about how you win and lose again. And uh, I, I think coming out, listen, come out with a game plan, execute that game plan, put, you put your best foot forward. And, you know, but, you know, most likely after four quarters, Georgia's a better football team than you. They're more talented top to bottom. They're probably going to beat you. But, you know, if, if, if you can lose mm-hmm. the game by 17 points and you make it a fourth quarter game and, you know, you've got an opportunity late, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's about how you win and lose. And last right. year you saw us got blasted against A&M, blasted against Georgia, blasted against Clemson. You know, it's about in those games, you know, like I mentioned over the summer, that, you know, you might go seven and five, and some people scoff at a seven and five. Some people scoff at obviously six and six. But if you're competitive in those six losses and you show progress right. and you show improvement, and, and I'm not trying to give moral victories, but – where you're at right now as a football team and a football program, that's just where you are. You know what I mean? Reinforcements are on the way. You're pulling in guys from right. recruiting, but where you are is where you are. So, um, you know, if you can go out against Georgia, hey, give them a fight. Give them hell for four quarters. Let the chips fall where they may. If they cover the spread, they beat you by 28, so be it. But at least make them earn it. At, at least make it look like, yeah, hey, make them, South make Carolina. Make understand that it's not right. Make, make, them, make At least understand that, uh, you know, I, I'd like to walk away saying, you know what? We're not a terrible football team. Georgia's just that good. Like, give them credit. Because I do think Georgia's just that good. Right. They don't – they most certainly – they most certainly don't need our help to, to – It's insane. Yeah, Georgia's good. They're, they're elite across the board. And, you know, I, I don't know, man. Players win games, and they've got five stars on five stars, and, and they're kind of just Alabama 2.0 at this point. So, um, it'll be tough. Again, we'll right. talk more about Georgia later in the week. But uh, – yeah, man, it's from from like your, from, said, from your lips like to God's said, ears, Robbie. The, from your lips to God's ears. I'll be at the I'll be at the South Carolina State game. So, love that. I'll be at the game in two weeks. Yeah. So, love it. I may may not hit you up. I don't know yet. Depends on what my friend, what my cousins and my aunt and uncle want to do. Mm-hmm. But um. But yeah. I, 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 uh, I'm excited at what this team can do later on this season. Like I said, if we somehow, if we, if we somehow get it going aside from Texas A&M, Clemson, and of course, Georgia this week, I don't see anyone else on the schedule that would be able to hang if we somehow get clicking on in all three phases. If we get clicking in all three phases, we'll beat anybody on the schedule. Robbie, that's a hell of a take, my man. Hell of a take. Hey, you might be right, too. You might be right. Because we got athletes, Dagdummit. The athletes are there. It's just about how you use them. And me and my aunt talked about this yesterday. And I feel like Satterfield struggles with this sometimes. Okay? Obviously, yes, we have the athletes, right? But you gotta know what your what your what your uh, skill players. You gotta know, you gotta understand what their weaknesses are and what their strengths are. And I feel like at the at, for right now, Satterfield doesn't know what the strengths what the strengths are. I'm not saying that we don't have talent because obviously we do. Okay, but what I'm saying what 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 my aunt was saying when I was talking to her yesterday. She said, you got to adjust your game plan to what to the players that you have. Right? The players I, I guess have, I guess not, I guess not, my question I guess my question for Saturday would be this. <clears throat> what how would you have attacked Arkansas differently? Like like we know their secondary was the weakness. I, I'm fine with people saying Satterfield right. sucks. That's fine. How would you have attacked Arkansas differently? I'm not saying I, I'm just sh- saying Robbie, that. Robbie, I'm just asking a question. How would you have attacked them differently? The, 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 we knew that Slusher, Catalan were out. Got to throw it. 
I, I just I don't know how you'd attack them differently. I probably would have done. I probably would have said, "All right, look, we're gonna we're gonna dag um, we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna dag um, get in formation, and they ain't gonna know what we're doing, okay? Because you're only and whenever you're on offense, you're only doing one of two things: you're either running the ball or you're passing the ball. Mm-hmm. But if you mix it up, and they have no damn idea what you're doing, you can move the football." I just feel like when you can't run the ball, when you can't run the ball any better than we can, what is the point in continuing to try to run it? And I understand we bailed on the run early. We also fell down 21-3 to early. So I I tell Uh you this again, whatever the offensive game plan was on Saturday, I had a lot more fun watching that and us actually score some points versus – Whatever that bullshit screen swing pass game plan was against Georgia State, I can tell you that. Yeah, I didn't like that one bit. I was like, what are you doing? There is no way that these safeties and corners can keep up with our wide receivers. Why are you doing why are you doing like swing screen passes, Satterfield? That's what I was thinking. I was like, you idiot, what are you doing? I mean, I know I ain't the sharpest tool in the tool shed, okay? Mm-hmm. But if I know for a fact that our defense's weakness is their safeties and corners, <laughs> I'm throwing the ball 88 and out the gate. Okay, I'm gonna see if my I'm gonna see if their athletes can cover ours. And honest to goodness, aside from Georgia State getting lucky, right? That's what it was, luck. Even though yes, our offensive line couldn't block a daggum pee wee team at, at that point in time. Okay, but. See if their athletes can keep up with ours. Because there's a reason why those athletes went to Georgia State. And there's a reason why our athletes and our skill players came to South Carolina. So see if your if their if their safeties and corners can keep up. And from what I could tell, they couldn't. It was just there was a lot of overthrows and just bad timing on the pass. And the offensive line couldn't block long enough for him to look downfield. Because it definitely showed that if you give Rattler some time to sit in the pocket, he can pick a defense apart. Indeed. we. I think we got the quarterback, man. It's just... You know, need to protect him, need run game to help. Robbie, we're going to jump into a break, my guy. I appreciate you calling in. Great stuff as always. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to your uh, looking forward to your prediction later in the week, by the way. And I'm just letting you know, there's a high chance it might not be true. Okay, I'm just giving you a heads up. Robbie, I, I, listen, man, the spread is 24 and a half, my guy. I'd, I'd be <laughs> – I think you were, you were high on drugs if you picked us to win. So, honestly. <laughs> Oh, trust me, I ain't high on no drugs. I know. I know you're not. Hey, right, yeah. I'd, I'd actually kind of respect yeah, it if you picked us to beat Georgia. I, I actually kind of would. Either way. Robbie, <laughs> I appreciate you, my guy. It's always a pleasure to chat right, with you. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much, man. You have a great day, okay? Yeah, Robbie, appreciate it. I I apologize, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> apologize from our, our, for shushing Robbie. I, I just – I was like, Robbie, let me make this freaking point, my guy. Let me make this point. Um – Guys, again, taking your questions, comments, calls. But, hey, Charlotte announced as a night game, by the way. Gamecocks will take on CLT under the lights. A 7.30 kickoff on ESPNU. I, you, you love to see that, honestly. You, you love to see that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to have, you know, LED lights. More opportunity to show off the LED lights. Um, so, yeah, love it. Love it. Absolutely. I mean, listen, you got that team in the upstate. They're playing La Tech this weekend at 8 p.m. So, hey, give us all the night games. We'll take all the night games. All the night games for sure. Uh, Guys, we're going to jump into a quick break, but I want to continue to hear from you. More of your questions, comments, calls, and more on the other side. You're tuned in to the Daily Crush.
All right, guys, we're back. Taking your questions, comments, calls, 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377 here on this Monday. Uh, let's see. Carolina Titans says Florida's more talented than us. I mean, yeah. Uh, talking about App State being Texas A&M. Yeah, incredible. Beating beating the Aggies. Wild. Absolutely awesome. wild. Bradley Miller, a.k.a. Little Brad Timmer. Little Brad, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well, man. Appreciate you asking. What's going on? Nothing much. I'm, I'm getting Saturday headlines from Arkansas and Gamecock. It was pretty good, pretty intense. I didn't expect it to happen that way, but you know, it's a big team. You yeah. always lose against that team all the time. Yeah, a little bit higher scoring than I expected. Obviously, when I talked, I had the under in the ball game, but. Uh... No, nah, man, listen, Arkansas is a good team. I mean, that's, that's you know, there's no, again, yeah. no moral victories, but my God, Arkansas is not some slouch. They're not like a five or six win team. This is a team that might win nine or maybe 10 games. I mean, our good friend Brad Crawford, he talked about in the preseason, he, he's picking them to go right. 10 and two. So quality football team, it, it was a mismatch. We knew that all preseason. What happened on Saturday was, was far from a shock. Yeah, I was catching up on how many yards, um, the quarterback and so many penalties on it on that day. So I was really on on the, on up in the run with that one. Right. Yeah, I it just. Yeah, I yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, little bro. Now, is this true that Will Muschamp coming back to USC? Because I don't want him to come back. <laughs> uh, will Muschamp is on Georgia's staff. Yes, so he will be in the building on Saturday. Oh my God! I mean, how would he this not man. be? They're not. They're not going to leave him back in Athens for the game. So I, I don't know if he'll be on the field or in the box. But Muschamp will indeed be back at Williams Bryce Stadium uh, for the first time since we let him go. So yes, that is a fact. I mean, it, when he come back, we gonna look him a certain way. Yeah, it's it's going to be really gonna, interesting. Gonna... I mean, obviously, again, I got the shirt on. It's it's fire Muschamp week for sure. So, uh, like, yeah. When I when that post count this month, I'm like, <clears throat> like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh. I forgot we played going to this. It's week. a it's a fun week, man. It's it's a fun week for sure. It's it's a fun week, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So I ain't gonna lie, I'm looking forward to seeing the game, watching it, and not seeing Will face after he made the team look bad mm. when he was when he was there. So. I don't have any else to say about that. Right. At this point, so. No, no for sure. I, look, you know, we're all, we're all we're all hoping for the best, man. I mean, I, I just again, I want to see us go out there four quarters, give Georgia hell, and you know, let's see where the chips fall. I mean, maybe, may, listen, maybe Georgia's vastly overrated, and, and Oregon's just that terrible. Right. And I mean, you never know. Hey, hey, to to, to give some perspective, I, I mean, for what it's worth, for what it's well, worth, different right. Georgia team. We were a 24 and a half point underdog in 2019 and pulled off the miracle upset. Right. So, I, I remember. maybe, oh, maybe, man. maybe, you know, but that's me trying to put the garnet glasses if, on. So, right. If we win, I mean, if we win against Florida, he had to score 10 to 10. Like, y'all be so. Yeah. If we, if we beat Georgia, yeah, hey, like, hey, the simulation said we we're going to beat Georgia for whatever that's worth. So, Probably nothing, but whatever. If they, if they win against us, I ain't going to be mad. Cool. It's your spot. Thank you. Yeah. Many years to come to beat Georgia, so I can't get mad over that. Yeah. All right, Chris, it was good seeing you. I will talk to you later. I will talk to you on Friday. Have a good day. Chris. Well, Brad, I appreciate you, man. No problem. All right, guys, we're continuing to take your questions, your comments, your calls. 843-790-3377. Appreciate little Brad for the call. Hey, check out the podcast that dropped this morning, episode 701. Uh, full breakdown, everything that happened on Saturday, of course, with the game, takeaways, top takeaway. Uh, Antoine Wells, our Cop Commander MVP award winner this week. What a game he had, man. Really establishing himself 
as wide receiver one. Uh, anyways, guys, boy, people are on edge on a Monday, that's for sure. Uh, in case you missed it, 7.30 kick against Charlotte in about two Let's jump to the phone lines. Brian, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, Chris? Doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well, man. Just chilling, just hanging out. What's up? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to call in. Uh, I think everybody would agree there's two things we got to do if we're going to start being competitive and winning these ball games. Is one, we got to stop the run. And two, we got to learn how to run. Now, to stop the run, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, obviously. Um, mm. But getting the crown game going on offense, I mean, I think that first drive, uh, the very first play of the game, we ran an RPO with Rattler and he got eight yards. Um, maybe that's something we could look at. And then the other suggestion is Juju McDowell, to me, looks better than Marshawn That's just in my opinion. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm not the coach and I'm not around him all day, every day, but – just from the game Saturday, Juju looked a lot better and a lot more comfortable, and he seemed to run harder than mine. So, I don't know the answer, but that's just my observation, you know. Right. No, yeah. I mean, listen, I like Juju's game a lot. I, I, I certainly don't want to throw in the towel on Marshawn Lloyd or anything like that, but uh, it, it does feel like it seems like every time Juju touches the football, good things happen, and he, he just plays with a tenacity that you really – uh, you really love to watch, right? It's fun to watch, and you respect the hell out of it. So, um, But, I mean, to your original point, man, I mean, Jake Crane said it, and, and Gamecock fans throw shade on him and hate on him, and that's fine. But he was right. Run the football, stop the run. If you don't do those two things, you're going to get your ass beat. That, that's just the bottom line. Football at the end of the day. Football at the end of the day. It, we, we can talk about all the flashiness and all that, but at the end of the day, it is a physical combat game in which if you can take the man in front of you and move him where you want him to go, you are going over the course of four quarters, you are going to have success. And, I mean, Arkansas just pushed us around. I, I don't even know. I mean, I, I understand we're going to critique and talk the rest of the game, but, like, th that that should be what we're talking about today for the, for the most part, right? I mean, I, I understand that Spencer Rattler didn't play perfectly and, and – and, and maybe even if you want to, you know, I've seen people talk about the secondary. and But at the end of the day, man, Arkansas just pushed us around too much. And, and that's, that's where the game was lost, you know. I, I mean, the reason people are highlighting Spencer Rattler's missed deep balls or missed play here, missed play there is because we were so porous in stopping the run, we would have had to play perfectly on offense. To have, we, we would have had to score 50 to win that game. You know what I mean? Like, we would have had to go score for score with them because we weren't stopping them. Now, granted, started the second half. Credit this football team. I, I thought you did a great job coming out. Looked like the game plan adjusted. You got to stop. Got back in it, if you will. But, I, I mean, all in all, in the long haul, I mean, they got up 21-3 to because, again, you could not stop the run. And give credit. This isn't some team that's, you know, it wasn't Georgia State again, and we're like, God, why can't we stop these guys? They're going to run on a lot of people. You know what I mean? They got a big physical O-line. K.J. Jefferson's a really, really good player, big physical quarterback. But, uh, I mean, yeah, man, listen, when, when, when you see Carolina in the top half in the conference and running the ball and stopping the run again, that's when you'll see us start to win 8, 9, 10 a year. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. I, I don't know that there's many really, really good teams that can't run it and can't stop the run. I, 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 just, I just don't know. You know what I mean? I, I don't know that there are. Right. Um, and also – Juice Wells, he, he looked like he could be um, wide receiver one after this weekend. But I still think Josh Van will come on. I don't know what's going on with that situation. To me, it looks like it's something mental because I don't know if you're paying attention. In the fourth quarter, he bear caught a punt and there was nobody 20 yards within it. Mm. I think there's something going on mentally with him as, as his, his mindset. Um, hopefully he gets that figured out because I still think he can have a solid year. Which is which is just weird, though. You know what I mean? Which is just weird. Like, what could be his mental block? I mean, he was he was our number one guy last year. He he came back to build on and have a better year. Like, I I, I don't. If anything, this should be the year he explodes. You know. So I again, we don't know, right? We're we're just 
outsiders, fans, whatever, taking a look at it. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what could be uh, the, the mental block for him. I, I really don't. But I, I'm hoping he turns it around. I, I think he will. I, I think, again, you've seen Brooks week one, Wells week two. Maybe this is Josh Van's week. You know what I mean? Or may, maybe it comes against Charlotte or SC State or Kentucky or just down the road. So, um, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But I, like, like you said, I haven't given up on Josh Van. But it is strange. It, it is it is strange these first couple of weeks. Like, it, it, it'd be one thing if, you know, oh, well, he's not wide receiver one. But, I mean, he has one catch. Like, it, it's like he's not even a part of the game anymore. It's it's, it's weird. All right. Then one, one more thing, I'll let you go. Man, we have got to get Austin Stogner on a treadmill, on a parachute or something. Dude is, like, running in slow motion. On NCAA 14, his speed rating would be 40 to fall. I mean, golly. <laughs> Yeah, a lot, lot, lot of folks have uh, said something about Stogner's speed. I mean, he's a big body dude. I mean, he's not going to run a four three. You know what I mean? So, uh, I don't know. It, it, just, it just is what it is, man. It looks like he's running in quicksand. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd still like to make him probably a, uh, a bigger part of the, uh, of the offense for sure. So, cool. All right, man. I appreciate it, Chris. So, all right, man. Hey, I appreciate you. Good stuff. 843-790-3377. I know we missed a call. Phone lines are ringing off the hook today. Phone lines are ringing off the hook. Um, let's see. I love it, man. It, there, there's nothing – there is nothing like social media during the college football season because the emotions run so, so high. So high. I mean, they, they just – so high, and uh, it, it is what it is, man. I, I've seen some comments in the uh, in the chat, and I, I'm not even we, – we keep moving. A lot of content to produce today, a lot of stuff to talk about, the Arkansas game, looking ahead to Georgia. Of course, Steven Garcia joined us. Really, really great combo with him. Um, so, really appreciate him taking the time. It's always a pleasure, guys. Check out the podcast. Check out the Daily Crow, I should say, in podcast form. Right, check it out in podcast form, iTunes, Spotify, uh, wherever you get your podcast. We are there, of course. The podcast for the Spurs Up show did drop this morning, episode seven oh one, seven oh one dropped. Uh, great show today. Uh, yeah, and again, guys, you heard the news today. Mo Kaba and Jordan Strawn are both out for the season. <sighs> you hate it. You hate it. You know what I mean? I, I thought for Kaba this was going to be a breakout year. And then Strawn, I thought he was going to be your sack leader. So, it, you just hate to see it. I mean, you hate to see it for those two guys. Um, really tough. I mean, again, two dudes that uh, two dudes that you were counting on all season long. And, and uh, you know, it, it just what, – what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Man down, next man up. But for a run defense that was already struggling, for a run defense that was already struggling, it's just – it gets even tougher. Um, we got a text here. I also thought we did very well on an empty set with Spence in the backfield alone. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that's the way to move. Listen, you can't run the ball. That's not a hot take. The stats say that. So until you find yourself in a matchup where you feel like it's really favorable, I, I like Georgia, I think you spread them out. You, you have to. You, you're not going to win this game in the trenches for 60 minutes. You're just not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Um. So, and I'm not saying you're going to have tons of success trying to protect Spencer Rattler, and but I think getting the ball on the outside, I, I think that's I think that's got to be the game plan because again, I just you're not going to line up and run it on Georgia. You're just not. You're just not. Um, Riley Ward says after seeing other teams' performance these past two weeks, like A and M, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida, do you think the outcome can change from your original predictions? Yeah, listen, I, I'm not someone that changes season predictions on a week in week out basis. Um, Kentucky's probably going to be a top ten team. We play them. Like, here's how I feel. The SEC East, right? And just the SEC as a whole, um, outside of Georgia and Bama, really, maybe Arkansas, if you want to throw them in. I mean, anybody can kind of just beat anybody. I, I mean, you saw A&M lose to freaking Appalachian State, right? I, I think Tennessee's a really good football team, right? I marked that as an L in the preseason. But but you look at, like, you look at like Florida, Kentucky – who knows? All right, let's jump to the phone lines here. Zachary, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, Chris. How are you? I am doing well. Appreciate you asking. What's up? All right. Uh, you know, Wiseman once said, you learn more 
and the loss than you do a win. I definitely think there was a lot to learn from this loss. I feel like the the for for instance, like the fast block, like I feel like we just need to be a pass first team because this team that O line just holds up better in pass blocking than it does in run blocking. And that was a way superior um defensive front than Georgia uh I can't even say that. Georgia, I want to say Georgia Southern. I, there's, there's too many Georgia schools, schools named after Georgia. Uh, so I want to say Georgia Southern. But there's so many. Um, but yeah, that pass, that pass defense, is def, uh, pass uh, protection is definitely better. Um, Drew Sanders is just a monster, so I yeah. don't think you should. Uh, really just be like, well, how is pass defense, uh, how is pass protection better when Drew Sanders, I'm like, that dude's a monster, and the only reason why he's not, he's still not at Alabama is because they have Will Anderson and Dallas Turner, and both those two can go first round, so he's just a monster, so, and uh, Juice Wells is that dude, he's that dude, um, a lot of people asking where Josh Fan is, I've heard from other people that he's hurt, so, that's probably what happened. So I know he's out there on kickoff returns, but maybe that's probably all they feel comfortable with him doing. So, I mean, there is a less, less likely chance of him getting hurt doing a kickoff return than him running routes. So, mm-hmm. especially if all he does is just fair catching. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I you know, uh, I, I don't know there's many folks that after watching Saturday would say the offensive line was as porous as it was against Georgia State. I, I thought in the pass blocking side, you know, I, I thought there yeah. were many times Rattler had a clean pocket. Um, I mean, it wasn't perfect. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it was a lot. I thought it was a lot better. Um, I thought it was a lot better. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just obviously just couldn't run the ball, but I thought pass blocking was indeed better. But again, give credit to Arkansas. Good defense, good D line. And yeah, that that Sanders kid is a freak. He, he he's a he's a beast. Yeah, and there were some people coming for the defense. I'm like, I'm not really gonna give too much crap on the defense mm-hmm. because we saw this last year with Tennessee. Up tempo off uh, up tempo up tempo offenses are this is this defense's weakness, mm-hmm. and I don't know if they just don't have the athletes to handle it yet, or what it is, but. Tempo offenses are are the defense's weakness. I don't know because I just like I said, don't know if we have the athletes or that's just the four two five a weakness of that's just how to exploit the four two five scheme. Mm-hmm. But I like I'm not going to be too hard on the defense because we saw we saw Tennessee do this last year. They went up tempo, they stopped, they they went up tempo, and our defense did not look <laughs> the same as it did in previous games, mm-hmm. and we were like. Oh, this defense is really good, and like Tennessee scores a lot of points, but our defense will be really good. And then next thing you know, we're all just like, "What's going on with the defense?" And it's like, it, it's just the tempo of it all. And then you add in the fact where you have both KJ Jefferson and Rocket Sanders, either one of them can run, and they're both so big and they're both so strong. And it's like, in that added on to the tempo, added on to the tempo of the offense it's going to wear your defense down. So I don't know why everyone's coming at the defense. It's like there's multiple factors in why the defense performed the way it performed, and not just because it's not good enough. It's just there's a lot of factors involved. Well, Zachary, I tell you, man, whatever the factors you want to point to are, 295 yards rushing and five yards per carry, five rushing touchdowns. That's what I look at. (laughs) So however you want to spin it, my guy, you're more than welcome. But – Man, I'm so tired of looking at our box scores and they look like complete ass. Like I, I, I you know what I mean? That we have, we are the king of ugly box scores. So, I, you know, I, I'm no rocket scientist, but I feel like stopping the run—that's that's our problem defensively. And again, it's the same defense as last year. Because right now, it's only been two games, but guess what? We're ranked 15th in pass defense, and we're ranked like a hundredth in run defense. It's the same as last year. Which is fine. Helps on the way, but that is the issue through two weeks. So, and I'm not saying to your point, hey, there, there are multiple things. There's layers to it, but – and I'm not saying we're even going to have a terrible defense. These first three weeks, though, especially Saturday and then this weekend, just horrid matchup for what we struggle with. 
for what we struggle with and what our strengths are, these are not great matchups for us. Unfortunately, they're just not. Yeah, but I heard Georgia – isn't Georgia throwing it more this year than last year? Because I, I don't know why, but I just heard they're throwing it more. I, I don't know exactly why I haven't sat down and watched Georgia game. But, you know, I hear – I mean, I, I haven't more, watched a ton so. of Georgia either. I mean, I, I think they're a team – from what I know about the dogs, you know, again, they're more of what Arkansas was. Um, big physical team. I mean, yeah. they can run the ball. Stetson Bennett, I agree with Steven Garcia. I think he, he doesn't get enough credit. Uh, fantastic at the tight end position. I mean, they're, 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 they're great all over the place. They're great all over the place. Um, yeah. So, but, but at the bottom, you know, bottom line is this. We, we will have to – we will have to slow down. Again, slow down the run game. To have any chance to have any to, to to keep it close, we have to slow down the run game. Uh, and as, as our friend DGD yeah. points out, Georgia or excuse me, Stetson Bennett threw for three sixty eight against Oregon, threw for three hundred on Saturday. So Stetson is throwing more, but I think that's that's scary because they've got the O line to run the football. But now you're telling me Stetson Bennett's hot and he's throwing it all over the yard. <sighs> Going to be tough, man. I, it's just. Yeah. It's going to be tough, I, you know, and I think obviously you've got to, like I said, going into Arkansas, you've just got to sell out to try to stop the run and, and, and you know, hope, you know, I think Cam Smith's obviously going to be good, but, you know, you, you put your guys on an island and, hey, y'all y'all are a top 15 secondary, you, you know, let's go see it and pray to God Stetson Bennett has a day on Saturday like uh, like Aaron Murray had back in 2019. I mean, that's that's really your your uh, your only shot. Or not Aaron Murray, uh, who was that in 2019? Freaking uh, – God, I'm drawing a blank here. Either oh, way, um, whatever. Either way, uh, anyways. From Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm. There you go. Yes, yes, yeah. Jake Fromm had yeah, 2019. Fromm. So I, I, that's. I think that's how you got to attack. Because again, if Georgia can run the football, you just, you just don't have a chance. So. Yeah, I, my thing about it is going like looking at this three week stretch. It was you knew this was going to be a three week stretch where it's like if you go one and two. It's like you probably know you're going one and two, and some people were like, "If this team is a little better than we thought, you can possibly go one and two. But you knew you weren't going to have cupcakes to start, and that's the thing. It's like I feel like if we can get like get to get to the Charlotte game, use the Charlotte and South Carolina State games to really, I feel like those are some games where you'll finally be able to breathe. You can finally be able to, you know, use them kind of like a glorified scrimmage to work on some stuff because I feel like that's some of the stuff that this team just was not allowed to do. We weren't allowed to use, like, kind of, like, get some cupcakes early in and be like, okay, this is – we need to work on this. We need to work on this, you know, stuff like that. And this brings me to a point that someone else says, like, you have the – now that we've introduced NIL, now that you introduced a 12-team playoff, um, transfer portals, coaches can go wherever they want to, schools are moving conferences, and you're trying to tell me you can't have a preseason or at least let some schools scrimmage against each other is my problem. It's like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I have no problem with, <clears throat> with preseason scrimmages. I would not do a preseason as far as yeah. games. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, scrimmages are fun. I, joint like, practices. Yeah. I, I'm, I, you know, I, I just don't know if coaches yeah. are willing to do that because of how secretive they are, and you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it, to it, your it, to your it, point, it, by it, the it, way, it, to your point, by the way, yeah, you start one and two, man. It's exactly where I picked you to be. You start three and two, it's exactly where I picked yeah. you to be. It'll come down to beating Kentucky in, in Lexington in regards to, you know, setting yourself up to win seven or more. I mean, I, I literally said it in the preseason. If you don't split Arkansas and Kentucky, which most likely beating Kentucky, if you don't split those, getting to seven wins, I think is going to be damn near impossible. Yeah. And, and, that, and yeah, but he, that's my thing. It's like, if, like my thing about it is like the schedule did not work out in your favor to mm-hmm. where you can test things because you went up against Georgia Southern and right. and Georgia Southern is now walking the park. You go up against Arkansas, who you know is really good, who you know is ahead of you, 
you go against Georgia, you know what Georgia is. And it's like the schedule gods are not favoring you when you did this. It's like you have to figure you have to figure stuff out against teams that are really good. That mm-hmm. against teams that are really good. And that's just not a re- that's not a recipe for success. I mean, listen, it's it's what everybody tried to say in the preseason, but nobody wanted to listen, is that this schedule was never conducive to a huge breakout year or a breakout start. Yeah. And and it just yeah. you know and it but again starting one and two it's not like your season's over but you gotta you gotta be willing to take the licks yeah. in the meantime Zachary we're gonna jump into one final break man I appreciate you calling in though always a pleasure chatting with you all right thank you Chris hey thanks man appreciate it uh, guys like I said we're gonna jump into one final break but I want to continue to hear from you more of your questions comments calls and more on the other side you're tuned in to the Daily Crow.
All right, guys, we're back. Final seven minutes or so here on the Daily Crow, taking your questions, your comments, your calls as well. 843-790-3377. That's 843-790-3377. I see you guys' comments just rolling in. Your thoughts, your questions. I know we had a missed call from, I believe, up in Oregon uh, earlier in the show. So if you'd like to... Aaron, what's up, man? How are you? Oh, man, just you know where I'm at. Every you you, you getting it in? What you doing? Legs, upper body? What you doing today? Uh, you know, you know, I got them legs, bro. <laughs> uh, he, he, he does not skip leg day, he says. He does not skip leg day. Love it. Okay. You know what? I was uh, I was big on Rattler. Coming to South Carolina, I, not that he was the best quarterback in the portal because the, the boy that went to Southern Cal was, and the, the the boy that went to Mississippi wasn't far behind. But Rattler was one of the upper echelon QBs in the portal, and I really thought him being at South Carolina. I'm on record saying that he's the most talented quarterback to ever play at South Carolina. That's 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 where I stand. Yeah. Offensive offensive line played pretty good this week. Well this past week. First first week you can understand. First time playing in the SEC and they had offensive line issues. Second week he missed a he missed a ton of open shots. But I have to say, I'm just I'm disappointed. I'm I'm disappointed in, thus far. He's got enough he's got enough time to rebound. I mean, we're not even a quarter into the season, so he's got a, a whole bunch of time to rebound. But I expected more, and that's just where I'm coming from. Mm. Uh, defense. I think this defense is, is because up front. They're kind of thin, and they were kind of small anyway. Kentucky's going to freaking uh, – they, they just got the boy Rodriguez back today. Hmm. But Kentucky's going to be a really tough matchup because you know they're going to play smash mouth. Hmm. They're going to be at home. Probably a night game. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's going to be a tough matchup. And if that game, if that game is lost, I don't know. It's going to be – it could be a tough year. But mm-hmm. I I said seven or eight anyway, and that's still possible. But, yeah, that could be tough because because of the state of both lines. I think every game – let me ask you, what game do you think – what game do you think South Carolina has the advantage – Either way, offensive line versus defensive line, defensive line versus offensive line. Well, I, I will say this. I yeah. was surprised. You know, Kentucky won the football game, but I was really surprised how, how bad their O-line looked uh, against Florida. Uh, you know, I, I thought Florida was living in the backfield for quite a while there. Um, so, maybe that maybe that's a little bit better of a matchup than um, – Maybe that's a little bit better of a matchup than than we thought in the preseason. You know, I I knew they lost four or five guys up there, so it it might help us out. Um, our offensive line against their D line, I, you know, do I expect us to be able to run the football against Kentucky? Maybe better than we did against Arkansas, but not. I don't expect us to pop off for like 200, 250, something crazy like that. Um, you know, I I think there are some matchups that are more favorable later in the season, uh, but certainly Arkansas and Georgia were we're not <laughs> we're, we're just not you know what I mean I, I think everybody saw that coming in so I, like, like I told you man you know yeah, and fair I, or unfair I, I I when I look at this football team in my opinion this is the same football team as last year with a better quarterback I mean there's some pieces across that are a little bit different here and there and there's some guys with some more experience but the problems we had a season ago some of them maybe not all but some of them are following this football team and that's not a – I'm not downing this football team. This football team won seven games last year. There's no reason they can't win seven again, maybe even eight. But we are facing a lot of the same problems, a lot of the same deficiencies. 
that we saw last year, and we've got to find a way to combat that. And, and that's that's true. It's the exact same team. And do you remember the question we asked? Can they get twenty four freaking turnovers? Yeah, can, can yeah. I mean that that was yeah, I mean, and you didn't force a single one Saturday. I mean that that was the only thing that was going to save you, right? If you'd have forced three turnovers in the football game, well then all of a sudden maybe, maybe that's the difference. But going on the road in the SEC, you give up 295 yards rushing, you don't force a turnover, you just have no chance. I mean, you just literally, I don't give a damn what your offense does, you have no chance. Yeah. I'm just, I'm disappointed, and I'm, I'm disappointed, and this is just me because he played decently, but I expected more from Rattler. Uh, I expected more from the run game. Uh, I'm just, I, I don't know what to say, but uh, you know, I didn't think South Carolina was better than Arkansas. They're definitely not better than Georgia. What I'm trying to figure out is. What I want to know is if – I really don't know if there's a better – the offensive line, defensive line dynamics. I, I don't think there are a lot of teams – I don't think there are a lot of teams that the matchup is favorable mm. in the South Carolina direction. Yeah. I think they're too thin. I think they're too thin and, and both on both lines. Mm. The, the defensive line after picking and versus – Versus stepped up, but he still not played to my expectation. And I ain't nobody. I ain't. I not a booster, and I don't freaking. I don't. I'm not a coach. So, I, but he hasn't played up to my expectation of a five star. And I, I don't know. It's not. It's not dire, but they need to. They need to put a performance on the field that makes. You know, that's going to keep the fans engaged all season. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, listen, I, I mean, it's going to be something – it's going to be something we have to combat all year for sure, winning at the point of attack, no doubt. Yeah, that's the – that's the big – that's the really, really, really big issue staring them – staring them down the battle. Yeah. I mean, staring them down the barrel. Mm-hmm. The the uh, the thing is, when you're playing a team like Arkansas and, and Georgia, mm-hmm. they're so big and so physical up front that you know – both lines are going to take a beating too, just like last game. You lost uh, Sean and you lost Kaba, and you, week after week after week of taking beatings like that, mm-hmm. playing physical teams up front, you know it's going to wear on both lines. Yeah, that's where I'm coming from, man. Good show, and you have a good day. Yeah, man, appreciate you. Thanks so much for the call, Aaron. Great stuff. Guys, we've hit 2 o'clock. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to go and get out of here. Um, go check out the podcast. I dropped this morning, episode 701. Uh, great stuff. Also, uh, this will be a monumental week uh, in regards to some uh, some milestones we will hit. You guys will know what those milestones are when we get there. But I do want to say thank you all so much, man, for the continued love and support. Beauties and the banter. So, you know we're in football season when people are getting up in their feelings about – this, that, and whatever, and, you know, it is what it is. As coach, the great Coach Boone from the Titans once said, I will not scratch my head unless it itches. I will not dance unless I hear music. We will not be intimidated. We will continue to keep it a buck and keep it 100, and I'd say it's working out pretty well to this point in regards to business. Guys, that being said, y'all have a rest of your Monday. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care.